Hi, my name is James D'Souza. Oh, I thought you were going to say you're a teacher. <laughs> I'm Willem Vanderhorst, a brand strategist. Willem is a brand strategist. I'm a teacher. I hesitated, partly Sorry, because this is this is going to be a very unique episode. Yes, like every one of our episodes, really. But well, that's true. But this is uh, well, maybe not unique. Maybe like emotional episode. Perhaps I don't know. We'll see where we go with this episode. Yes, let's and see. I, I'm, teaching. I'm, I'm not sure. Perhaps yes. Go ahead. This is the season. Uh, it's the finale. It's the this finale. is the finale it's of the finale of teaching tangents. <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> which is crazy because normally what we do. For, for you, us, I don't know. For you, listener, person, I don't know. Watcher, whoever you are, the normally on teaching tangents, what we do is we take a question that's either been bugging me or annoying one of my students or some other random thing, and then I ask it to Willem, and then we talk about it and explore it and go on all sorts of crazy tangents. But today's episode is all about completion all good things end, everything must come to an end, everybody dies, every living thing dies alone, yes. all that kind of stuff, quoting Donnie Darko, that just came to me. Oh, I should watch that again. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good film, and it's old now, because we're mm -hmm. old. It is old. Doesn't feel like it. So today's episode is all about completion, and we are completing Teaching Tangents. Yeah. Uh, and it comes on the back of if you if you missed it, there's an episode, the last episode we published for 2021, and this is early 2022 at the time of recording. Uh, we completed season three. We had, if you follow the show, we had gone through last summer a, a bit of a reorg. Uh, we thought, okay, we put in some effort into reorganizing the show and the way we introduced mm. the show and the way mm -hmm. we organized the the season around a particular theme mm -hmm. so we did that for all of season three uh we had a number of questions to answer all about career uh we had thoughts about going on to another season and then we the last two bonus episodes of the year we used them to talk about our reading lists and also practices for completing 2021 and creating 2022 and in the process of us talking about completing the year and what we wanted for next year, it kind of came, came naturally to talk about where is the show at and what are we doing mm. with it, mm. right? I mean, does that fit with the general That is a very good explanation. It does, yeah. It's yeah. a very good explanation of where we're at and our thinking. And sometimes in, in the run-up to recording this episode, I, I realised... There's nothing wrong with ending something. And sometimes, whatever it is, and sometimes it can be that I feel really sad when the book ends or if I'm intentionally finishing or bringing completion to something, then sometimes there could be something wrong. It could be a relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be a recording a series of episodes for a, a podcast, whatever it is. And in the back of my mind, I thought, is there something wrong that we're doing this? And actually there isn't. It's that everything has a beginning, middle and end. Yeah. And the yeah. where I thought we'd start with this episode is the origin story of Teaching Tangents. Which Just one, just one note before we go there, though. Sure. Uh, just in case, because I'm not sure how uh, common, how commonly used the word completing in this way is, like completion and completing. Uh, it's a bit jargony in coaching world, I think. I'm not it sure. It could be. It's uh, a bit, so I thought it's a bit I, I like just, closure. We don't have to. We don't have to go into more than a just very brief explanation or definition sure. for it. But I thought I'd just mention that. Yeah. And also, Good. if you want to go into more detail about completion, then I would refer you to the previous episode about completing 2021. But otherwise, just as a very brief definition, it's just about like you know how do you end something and what is there to be said. I think right. I, I don't know. Is there anything else about that? Or... Yeah. The, the other phrase that I think is common is bringing closure to something. Yeah. The other go. That's that's common. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's... I'm just not sure how how common the word completion is like this. I just I thought I'd mention it. Yeah. Fair enough. Like we use it. I that know works. that. Um, so anyway, but yes, you're right. So, but let's just go back to the beginning. 
no. But we said, okay, this is about this is about really we're coming we're bringing the show to an end, but let's just go back to the beginning before we do that. Yeah, and you're right to remind everyone about the episode about completing the year because that's really useful. So Mm -hmm. the origin story of teaching tangents is that I work as a teacher, and lockdown was happening, COVID was happening. I was teaching lots of lessons via. Microsoft Teams and one particular class has to do a research project about a particular topic and then write up a marketing analysis, marketing research, marketing plan campaign type thing. And the particular topic that my class had to do was role playing games and tabletop role playing game and gaming gaming. So naturally I thought of villain because you have you play a lot of games. You have a podcast about role-playing games, don't you? Uh, I participate in a podcast about role-playing games in France. Uh, in yeah, French. okay. In, in French, okay. Right, so... I have, so inter- I, I have interviewed uh, role-playing game designers and board game designers in my podcast, which mm-hmm. is... Uh, well, that's another... We'll come circle back to that one because my, my podcast is sadly just... You know, there's weeds growing over it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you've got so many podcasts. So the the... I naturally, in, in when I saw the brief from the exam board, and we're doing it as a practice for my pupils, I naturally thought of Willem. So I think we have recorded a conversation for my students, and yeah. I had a bunch of questions. That's right. And then and you got I, questions from your students, I think, to interview I did. me. Yeah. And that video was, as I understand it, just meant as a also just an interesting piece of content to break a little bit from only you on the video conferencing. But also, and this was the beginning. It was the first lockdown, spring 2020, right? It was, and it's also the well, wow, it was that long ago. So, yeah, the but it was also to give them something. 60 episodes of teaching tangents. Is it really that many? Wow, I think something so, like that. Maybe not. No, not. Uh, I think it's more like 40. It's over 50. Over 50, just over 50, not 60. Sorry. So the it was also to give my students something else apart from books and going online, and then the personal connection because when when my students start to see their teacher doing something slightly different and on video, yeah. it kind of creates a whole other like, oh, suddenly that's, their that's teacher cool. is human, different. Suddenly their teacher is human. Yes. <laughs> a bit like like more than into, one dimensional bumping psychology into, teacher, Mr. D'Souza. And business as well. So the and business, which, sorry. But the like bumping into students when I'm at the cinema, that kind of thing. So yes. the it makes it made it more interesting for them. And that conversation was so good. It was, it was so much fun. It reminded us both that, like, we know, we've known each other for a while, but we're through common friends and we've hung out occasionally. But we, we've said every, we had said in the past that we really, really enjoyed chatting with one another, but we hadn't done that regularly. Mm. And I think that was a big reminder. We both said that was really great. We should do this more often somehow. Yeah. So then we, I think... I don't know how the idea formed, but the idea of doing something live, because the first bunch of episodes were live, and yeah. I don't even know how I th- like how the question thing came about either. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. I think because you had questions from your students at first, I think it was because because you you said you liked the way that I think in tangents and that I had generally interesting things to say. So you, we, I think that's how it started. That you're like, let's let's have a thing where I ask you a question. I can't remember. We brainstormed the idea vaguely, but we just we went with it. We but the other thing try something. about our conversations is that both of us. I, I, I yeah, I, I think I remember now. So my lessons go on tangents all the time, hmm. all the time, and they go all over the shop. <laughs> yeah, and the it's become one of the defining characteristics of my lessons, which the once when i was observed i tried to make my lesson super linear Uh and because you're observed or because i was being observed by a senior teacher so i focused and made it super logical and the feedback was it wasn't as engaging as my other lessons so i thought forget this i'm just going to do whatever i've been doing because it's more interesting and engaging for the students that so that came up that's where i got the idea for tangents from and then the questions from students because you'd recently become a proper teacher yeah but we started the questions even before 
that or were during the same time because it was just before mm -hmm. I started teaching, but I had just accepted to start teaching a, a class, a couple of classes mm. with, the, with the communication advertising school in France called ISCOM um, on their mm. international section. So teaching in technically in a school in Paris, but in English, um, mostly with French, but also international students. Mm. And, and you asked questions of your students to see if they had questions for me. And I don't know how you went about asking your classes of pupils for questions because you had a few to begin with. And I then after that, I started teaching. And so I also did the same with my mm. students. Uh, and so the first episodes and even the first, so that's what we called the first season starting summer 2020. Yeah. And that went all the way to the end of 2020. And we did regular weekly calls that were mm. published live on YouTube. Uh, with every one of the questions and the questions were that was the, sh the show was really about that it was just okay well we're gonna ask questions of young people and answer them mm. so they tend to revolve around studies motivation mm -hmm. uh career work entrepreneurship stuff like that Most but also them, not only not only there's some about social relationships yeah that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, if you browse through all the episodes, you'll see, right? That's, you know, we, we don't really need to reminisce that too much, I don't think. No, and it's available. The yeah, live sure. conversation, it's all on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, on mm -hmm. YouTube. But those, there was something special and I think useful from a presenting and thinking and maybe even teaching point of view about doing it live. Yeah. That doing it live regularly enhanced my ability to talk and communicate on video, not saying I'm an er as much, being comfortable being on video. So like still there's the video camera. Ums. I've been podcasting for years and there's still me. and ums. And sometimes ers and ums are a natural part of the uh, your football. We naturally all have filler words one way or another. Yeah. So there's always, even if you manage to get rid of one, there's probably another one popping up. Yeah. And my tendency is to do a lot of ums. Uh, mine is and I discovered. Mm -hmm. So, but the process of going live and doing it live on YouTube and learn a bit more about live video, about Zoom, about being on video, about the whole, I certainly have become much more comfortable being on video. Yeah. I think everybody has as a result of lockdowns and teaching and whatever, but the, that made a huge difference. And then <laughs> we'd also do the thing about t-shirts and coffee yes, mugs. At the beginning we did t-shirts and coffee mugs. At the beginning, we spent a lot of time talking before the questions. <laughs> yeah, we did. About which may have been rubbish. detrimental to the show. And I recurringly talked about, and we talked about, I know you even say so all the time, about not promoting this enough, but that actually we did enjoy just chatting with one another. That's As a few that people, the like there's not a lot of views and there's not a lot of subscribers on my channel at all. Um, there's, I just did it again. Um, the few people who did watch, mostly friends, told me that we, I did have good feedback from our conversations, that mm. we have a great energy, that we have interesting things to say, that it's fun. Mm. Um, Part of what started to happen, though, because we were getting questions from young people, is they started to re repeat the themes and yeah. Kind of circle around the same kind of stuff because young people have very similar concerns everywhere. Yes, and Jobs, we were speaking careers, frequently, all of that. and we were we were we tended to talk about the same things over and over again as responses, yep. both because we had the same questions, also because I think that we were talking often enough that we were not necessarily renewing all of our information. Does True. that make sense? Yep. So we went out <clears> there discovering, reading constantly putting loads of effort into preparing and thinking about and exploring yeah. what's out there and what's current necessary. So for example, one podcast and I was just listening to it, uh, making coffee this morning that I really enjoy is British mm. podcast from the QI team called there, there's um, no such thing as a fish. Do you listen to that? I haven't listened to any of the recommendations you've given me. Okay. Anyway, yet. it's a comedy. It's fantastic. They tour or they were touring. They're put, they put off some dates right now because of the COVID situation. Uh, but it's a group of four people and it's mm. from the QI team. So for anybody who knows that it's all about funny facts and, uh, and being extremely witty 
and just circling and bouncing off of various ideas. And the theme of the show is there are four people and each one of them has a fact. And they talk for 10, 12, 15 minutes per fact. And it's a random fact and they all have studied all of their random trivia and they bounce off of each other, go on dangling modifiers, all sorts of funny comments. They make they make witty banter. Or they, do you make witty banter? They do. They, that's what they do. They talk with witty banter. Witty banter. Yeah. Q, QI stands for quite interesting. Isn't yeah. It? And uh, this is no such thing as a fish. So, but my point being is to be able to record and publish this show week in week out. They yes. spend their time reading about new stuff and they share all this trivia and interesting information with one another in the team mm -hmm. thing that like we don't we didn't really do um so while we did read new stuff and we we talk about you can i can refer you to our episode about public completing the year and all the books that we read given we had similar questions of similar concerns for young people we tended to give similar advice that I said in one of our prep calls during between Christmas and New Year, that you could probably, I mean, aside from all the joking and a bunch of other information, if you want to just summarize all of the episodes in a short bit, you could just say, well, journal every day, meditate, mm -hmm. read some Professor Yuval Noah Harari, although I do have a lot of other references. He comes back a lot. Well, uh, read books. Read books. Read books of all sorts. And uh, the, and that, kind of thinking led to us picking a theme for season three yes to, well also because at season one and two we went very unfocused <laughs> but we went from season one we were sharing t-shirts and mugs and stuff and chatting before the question then season two we got a little bit more okay let's like we've gone through a t-shirt and mugs collections multiple times now it's fine <laughs> i don't think people it's fun for us but i don't know how many people how much people are really interested so let's dive into the question we can do tangents later mm -hmm. And then we got to a point where we're like, okay, we're getting a lot of questions. How do we make this show? How do we structure it? Which is what we tried last summer. And mm -hmm. uh, if you've seen, we relaunched the show. We tried to have another type of introduction. We tried to organize this a little bit more. We thought a little bit about who we are, who our audience is, what we want out of the show. And that gave us a bit of structure with the common media references uh, to, go and, to go out and look at a few things. As a transition, we chose to to have the season about career, even though we had a lot of questions about career. The idea being that we're okay. Let's use this as a springboard and see where we go with mm -hmm. a uh, a theme that will be of interest to our students. While I mean, I think still looking at we were we we took it as okay. This is us answering a question from students, and so hopefully interesting to all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And then between Christmas and New Year, and I told you this, I had I was asking talking to a friend, and I've had this comment. It wasn't the first time I had this comment, actually. Uh, okay. Thinking about our uh, audience. Yeah. And this person said, "But that's kind of interesting." But then to your audience, you're always going to be you're, you're keeping it really small to to students, and you're always going to be teachers rather than yourselves to them. And is that isn't that um, limiting your possible audience by keeping it to your classrooms? Now, there's, it might be true. There's also certainly something about the fact that I barely ever promoted this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we didn't. We published it on yeah. our social media, but I, we this, was, this was coinciding. Also, this whole time of us doing the show has been coinciding with me doing a, like being a lot less on social media, all of them. Mm -hmm. Just publishing much less, trying to use it less, not putting it on my phone. Um, so browsing a little bit here and there, posting very little, but I'm posting much less on all of them, on, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. So, yeah, sorry, I'm just going a little bit. Actually, maybe we should just pick back our thread that we said we were going to do at the beginning of the episode or before we started recording. That's all right. We're still in it. It's, it's, no, it's, no, I know we are, but I don't know if we're just, I was like, okay, maybe we're doing a little bit too much reminiscing of this getting a little bit. No, more. I think, I think, I think it's, it, it as you're, as we're talking about it, we're also, I'm certainly discovering the things that I got from doing this. Because Okay, that's what I wanted to get back to. The idea yeah. being, so the header of this section of the conversation, even though it's, it seems a bit forced, but I wanted to get it for myself. Yeah. Is now, okay, so this is, we said where we started. Now, uh, the overall header is like, what did we get out of this exercise? 
Yeah, and I've been hinting at that as we've gone through this first bit because yeah, I talked about I, I being I more comfortable on video, <laughs> being more comfortable on video, being able to avoid the filler words a bit more, bit learning more about live okay. video, that kind of stuff. The other thing I think you're highlighting is to actually create and put out content regularly and promote it takes effort. Yeah. And we have said for you, I can refer you to episodes about entrepreneurship. Yep. And we have, um, you tell, told me that your pupils regularly say, you know, oh, I could be social media famous. I could just publish some videos on TikTok. Anybody who wants to be and tries realizes that it is, it takes a lot of time and effort. This is exactly what happened. It takes by the way. enormous amounts of time and effort. Yeah. So the pupil of mine who said, yeah, I could do it. And then never really got into it before Christmas. He said he would. And he said he was going to, we came up with a little plan and objective and he said he was mm -hmm. going to do something on, do like fitness videos on TikTok every day. Okay. And then we, I think we came back after Christmas or the end, towards the end of Christmas or something. And he was like, yeah, it's really hard. Doing daily videos is really hard. Yeah. I totally underestimated how hard it was. Yeah. And it was. All the influencers it, who publish every day have to deal with enormous amount of pressure. Mm-hmm. From the objectives, from numbers, from changing platforms, from the time it takes, from the toll, like psychologically and emotionally on whether you're good enough, are you good enough mm -hmm. compared to all the people that you're looking at that you think are successful, all that kind of jazz. It's really a lot of pressure. But for us, and that's one thing they usually say, I've read in a lot of advice about blogging and podcasting when I started my podcast six years ago, seven mm -hmm. years ago, which was the most important thing is are you doing something that you enjoy doing and would do out there and put would put us out there regardless of anybody listening? So ah, that's for me okay. is something that we definitely have. Yep. That I really, really enjoy having the conversations with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, so I think we, tr we tr uh, actually, you know what, that's it. So, so something I really get out of this is, is, is personally, I really enjoy having this time chatting with you. It energizes me. I think I get a lot of new ideas out of it. I really particularly enjoy the, the being in contact with you because I like the fact that you're uh, more and better, I believe, organized than me. And I, I'd say organized as in you have structures and processes to keep good habits Hmm. Uh, going and you do and a lot of things around that like you publish your Instagram videos and we talk about organization and that's something that I'm not very good at I'm not very good at that I'm very good at just rolling with things and but I get better if I have somebody that I talk to on a regular basis and that's been hmm. my anchor and I really appreciate that it's really like gratifying that you appreciate my conversations my ideas where I go with things so it's just hugely gratifying to be able to talk to talk to you and you going that oh you I said something that was really profound. I mean it's you do my ego big time as well. I, yeah, but it's not. So, the, it no, might strike your ego, it's, but well, it's, yeah, it's but also it's, true I, for me. I feel better out of those conversations afterwards. <laughs> Good. After that, I'm like, if I feel if I feel like crap because I, I I think I didn't do something I should have, I come to those conversations and I feel good out of them. And then there's another big one which is even though it may not because just out of numbers of views and listens it may not have made a difference to a lot of people but there's mm -hmm. a lot of the episodes questions that were real questions from people yeah. that asked me that are remain anonymous but i like to think and i've heard from at least a couple that we did really make a difference and answer valuable mm -hmm. in a valuable way somebody had a real question mm about their career, about their degrees, about social interactions, about all sorts of stuff. So I know that some of my students have asked me qu asked questions that were just because they were difficult and they, uh, but some of them were re real actual questions that they had. Yep. And I, I hope that yeah. it made a difference, a positive difference to them. And that even though that's also the advantage is that all of this remains there. The questions are there, it might does, pop up and surface again. If anybody yep. has a question, they can just check them out. It's pretty much evergreen content, what we did. It's not about current affairs. It's just generally always there. Unless the structure of studies changes, in which case the master's degree may or may not be useful. But overall, like, you know, how do I get better on one-on-one -on -one conversations? It's that episode will be valid in five years. So people can watch it five years from now. Agreed. Totally agree. It's certainly, and, and thanks for the compliments, because the 
what happened at the beginning when we started talking is it deepened our friendship yeah. and I realized how similar we are and how it was the thing that was that I got from our conversations and, and certainly over the episodes is that I'm not this weird person who randomly thinks about random stuff and laughs at random things I'm not like that I, don't, I didn't feel so weird after talking to you it because was you felt weird otherwise yeah okay. because because you we don't have enough this... people like me around you do you no I don't like... really I don't think I do because I went to, we went to the cinema yesterday uh -huh. and we watched House of Gucci which is I heard it was very good it is actually good I didn't realize okay. it was it was Ridley Scott and yeah. there were parts where I'm laughing because I find it funny and like I really don't care whether other people are laughing or not but I am aware of the fact that I'm laughing and nobody else is and it's that or other times where I'll say something to my wife or a friend where I've gone like oh it's just like this and they look at me going what how did you how do those two things even relate and I'll explain it and it's like it's obvious to me and my conversations with you over every episode, I felt that we can connect whatever it is and we can talk about what seems utterly unrelated through the tangents in a way that makes me feel much better about how I connect and come up with ideas. The really, the icing on the cake for me was in season three where we realized we're both protagonists. Yeah, that's funny. We're both, we both have the same, the, uh, we Myers -Briggs the same Myers Briggs profile, Briggs profile. on uh, 16personalities.com, which is a really funny website. Yeah. So that did, if, uh, and t typically protagonists are teachers, journalists, ideas, people, coaches, like that, ideas, people, leaders. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it, it felt like come, everything was coming full circle when, when I discovered that. And it, it happened live during an episode. We were like, oh, we're both protagonists. Yeah. So that's something it's made me feel, it's given, it's empowered me to explore wild ideas in a way that I wouldn't have normally, and, and to be open to serendipity in a way that I wouldn't normally. And coming awesome. back to these conversations every week has, has reconnected me with the idea of it's, to, to go a bit kind of big, like the idea of a universal consciousness that we dip in and out of, the, the things we come at, like the hero's journey, those repeated ideas, like I'm gonna come up with an idea, follow it through, and there's no new ideas, it's just stories repeating, all of that. So I feel, I feel gratified in that way that I'm not such a weirdo. Yeah. It's funny actually circling back to the person talking about audience definition, was saying that really we should, our audience should be people like us one way or another. So what you just described, ideally, should be an ideal audience and might be the kind of people who appreciate the show. Uh, now, at the same time, I think and I think we can just kind of move on to the next section of the conversation-ish. Yeah. As to definitely. why we're stopping, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, and if there's more to say about what we got out of the exercise, there's... It will come up. You know, it will come up, it's fine. But... Be a tangent. But we, we, we talked about like, okay, what do we want to do for the next season? I think we're both, or at least I am, very happy and satisfied with the work that we did last summer over structuring this last season. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, so it was less episodes. Yes, However, good point. However, all yeah. the questions were mostly, were in fact, I mean, to be honest, not really coming from pupils and students. Mm -hmm. They're not from real people for the most part. There were a couple mm -hmm. of them, but... I think otherwise you made the questions, right? Yeah, that's true. You wrote the questions, which is fine. Uh, but it was not. It's also not the same quality to know that. And I sp and we changed from live to recorded, like we're doing now, mm -hmm. which is also fine because we know we're going to publish it. But that also, even if it's not tons of time, it's still time. As in, I just you know, yeah, got it off point. of my computer. Uh, rip the audio out to put it on Spotify, upload it to YouTube, put the titles, share it on social media. I did the what's what I would consider to be really the bare minimum to publish a show, but even that is extra time on top of the hour that we're doing. Yeah. And yeah. and that and the bare minimum is really not putting the effort in to have the show in place and exist uh, and find an audience, to be honest, because there's just so much competition for attention. And we we know that this is a lot of the topics that I circle back around work stuff on, mm -hmm. on we're in an attention economy. 
and everything is everything is vying for your attention so to try to get people's attention for an hour is huge mm -hmm. so at the end of the year when we talked together and looked at okay what do we want to do for next season and let's have a look at the statistics of yeah. youtube and, and yeah. very briefly of um anchor or the audio uh platform where we publish to spotify and apple Podcasts, etc we looked at it and we saw well there's very little few people watching this thing really not a lot of people are watching this yeah. thing and it's and it's, it's completely pretty logical with the amount of effort i at least have put in and i think you too yeah right it's, it's we're not completely on top of this altogether. And I was just briefly thinking this morning, the little success I've had with my own podcast mm -hmm. comes from uh, names that were known in game design. So mm -hmm. the pe those people have an audience and so they followed. And or my the rest of my guests uh, on the work side of things is, is a mix between their popularity and the fact that I was working within a, a, a niche in an environment where I also have a small, you know, very really tiny but a little bit of reach and reputation within my own professional field mm -hmm. which i don't particularly have creating this uh, this show which is kind of just a talk show with amongst two friends uh and the number of podcasts that are just two friends chatting with one another regardless of the theme whether it's about cinema or whatever are you know legion there's tons yeah <laughs> there are there's there tons are. so I think we, we just got onto thinking, okay, what do we want out of this thing? And, yes. and also what do I want for, and this again goes in following from completing 2021 and creating 2022. And I think we got to a point where we we're like, okay, well, I think between the, the audience, the questions, the, I, I, th and we, I think we go, both got naturally to the same conclusion of like, in reality, we don't really want to put the kind of effort that it would warrant to keep publishing this particular show as it is, or as it could keep, as it could keep growing, whatever it could become. But it was, it was also that kind of choice of, we really could yeah. push this and grow it, but mm -hmm. the amount of effort required to do that, yeah. were we willing to do that? Yes. No, we weren't. Yes. Therefore, this is what we're doing. Exactly. And to say, actually, make it a clean, I mean, this is what I think, make it a clean break and say, okay, we're stopping this thing yeah, because we, the, we like the concept. It can keep growing. There's something there that we've got. We could change mm -hmm. it slightly so it's bigger than students and pupils, but it's about whatever, exploration. But we would, but just like I talked about QI, because that's what I was thinking, we would need more time to promote it. But mm -hmm. really, to make it really interesting, we would really need to put an effort to study and prepare for these things properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. episode per episode because otherwise i'll keep repeating the same stuff over and over again and then it's not interesting and and just like you said i'm like okay you know what i don't want to do that in 2022 i'm not willing to put all that effort into growing this particular show as it is yeah you've got films to watch and tv series to consume and games to play particularly tv series to consume <laughs> no but i want to write oh uh, yes of course well me too write. actually i want to spend more time writing uh is one of my things for 2022 and um so yeah so that's that's the main thing i don't know if there's anything else to add for you on like why we're stopping it as it is and i think I you think said so. a few times we're, we're, i said as it is and other similar things so we can probably announce what we're doing next i i think you're right we can announce what we're doing next shall i yeah you go for it okay we're gonna keep doing the same thing <laughs> <laughs> But that's because no, it's not. It's that's not. Because, it's like, well, it's sort of, yeah, but, it's sort of ish, not exactly the same. Yeah, thing. but that's because we we'd actually sat down and talked about yes. over Christmas what's useful about these conversations, and yes. I really like the point you made about if you're going to create something and and put it in the public domain, and whether it grows or not, would you keep doing it whether people listen to it or not? Yes. That's a really key thing. So. And I never really thought about that question very much until you just said it. So the, we know what we like doing. We know yes. what works. We know yes. we have a good dynamic. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose that because it's yeah. too cool. Yeah. It's too useful for us both. Just for us but both. Yeah. We're not really massively going to spend loads of time putting a show together every week and promoting it and growing it so we can become 
YouTubers and make loads of money because that's not really what we want to do. No, I just want to be famous for fame's sake. <laughs> Everyone gets their 15 minutes, don't they? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I might have As already Andy Warhol said. Mind. Well, it's, really? it used to be 15 minutes. I think it's three seconds now. Yeah, how long is it? It's however long a TikTok video is. Is it three seconds for a TikTok video? It depends. No. It could be 30. It could be 30. It could be a minute. Uh, a lot of them are shorter than that. I've, I've just thought of a question that would take another tangent, but I'm not going to ask. All right. Now. Let's <laughs> not do that right now. So, um, so what we're, what do, we're doing is... We're going back to a live format. We are. Because this is the minimum effort stuff. <laughs> It's just like it takes the least amount of time. It's just like turn the live button on, and once it's out on YouTube, there's nothing else to do. We're not going to do trailers anymore. I don't know that we're going to do it on an audio form at all. We're just going to publish on YouTube, just like that's it. Just not, yeah. Not, forget just audio. Forget, no, forget it's audio. too much effort. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to. We're not going to particularly promote it. I may or may not. I'm. I don't. I'm not promising anything, and I'm probably not going to. I don't even know if we're going to have, we might have an intro and we're going to come up with a new name because we're saying we're completing teaching tangents. And the next form of the conversation is just going to be us chatting together. We may or may not have a question or a theme. It's certainly to support one another yeah. with create. Well, I think that in everything, but in broad strokes, you support me with production, keeping up to date with doing stuff and inspire and in both ways, inspiration and ideas. And I support you in, you know, new ideas, creativity, and like, it's, and we both come of, out. We both come out a bit more energized to do stuff for the following week or following two weeks, whatever. Exactly. It's very much about. I I know that I want to create something that contributes to people, and I want to be recognized for it. But I don't want it to be teaching tangents. I don't want yeah. it to be a podcast that's not something. I I because we both have different interests. Yeah. So, but creativity and writing stuff down writing producing video content whatever it is creating something yeah. is hard it is it's really hard. It doesn't always have to be but it, it takes something you have to give of yourself and that's what we're going to get be empowering each other on exploring creativity creative expeditions creative adventures creative endeavors endeavoring to be creative exactly so we're going to call our show something like that but the name we're is gonna, not going to be... Wait, what? We're going to call our show something like that? No, are we? Oh. I thought we were. No, I thought you meant literally we're going to call our show something like that. Oh. <laughs> no. I meant something like the, all the creative words that you said. You said creative expeditions, endeavors, projects, etc. Uh, okay. But we can call it something like that. We could. I, I was it. hoping we would have a set name so that we can announce it. But then again, it doesn't really matter. It's like if you if you already if you're watching this, you like us and you Suggest. can follow the channel and we're still going to be around. Uh, we're just we're changing the name and we're having no pretense of growing it. And you're welcome to come and watch and ask questions. It's fine. That's it, really. Actually, it, yeah. should w would it be any more effort for you to have another YouTube channel where you upload it? Well, we, sorry, we don't even load it. We do it live. Because uh, we were doing it live. We we're doing it live on my channel, on my on channel, your channel. My channel. You just want to do it live on your channel. Actually, we could just decide that after. Yeah, that's just a sudden thought there. Yeah. No, no, I, I need to find out. I think I need to create a new Gmail account, a new YouTube account to be able to do that. Uh, we could. Oh, too much effort. <laughs> Well, we could, if it, unless it was a shared Gmail. But this is another conversation from another time. Yes. We've reached the end of this episode, I think. Yes. Look out for Willem and James's creative adventures, adventures yes. in creativity, <laughs> whatever we're going to call it. Tune in live every likely Sunday morning because nobody else is awake then as we discuss how Willem is going to watch how many shows are you going to go for? Oh, Let's say no, 20 no, no, shows. No, but I want, no, I want to watch more movies this year. Last year I said I wanted to watch more movies and I looked at how many TV shows I watched and I didn't even keep a precise tally. It's scary. Actually, Willem's going to do more work and become a... World famous writer. Podcaster, player, uh, authority on play, joker, jester. <laughs> okay. Already there. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, and we'll have some kind of structure for the new show, but it's not going to be very, very, very structured. Maybe we'll, and we've done the t-shirt collection. You can go back to season one and teach intentions. For that. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Thanks for engaging. Thank you for watching. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. for the questions and enjoy. All right.